my dear, my gentle, my beautiful orchard, my life, my youth, my happiness. Hello. Privet. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm going to have to put some people into the waiting room because they're early. Hi. Okay. Early. Wow. I'm just going to add you to the waiting room. Thank you. No one else is in the room where it happened. <laughs> Indeed. Get my Bluetooth in. Friends, if you could please change your names and your backgrounds, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. I was say, Robert, Robert Heinley is a great actor. If we need him to like pinch hit, he could come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did uh, Charles the Third with him. Me too. Yeah. He was my Charles to my Camilla. Indeed. I would <laughs> say. He was so he, he was so <laughs> as Finch. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he would be great, Atticus. Yeah. He was amazing. He did a great job. As a matter of fact, you remember oh. um, um, Jack, ah. when we were doing Poe and I was trying to get somebody to read that poem as a memorial? Mm -hmm. I was trying to get Robert. I couldn't reach him. Oh. He was the one who acted with her in that scene. Gotcha. Hey, Jackie, I don't know if you I saw your message. I you was did. just, okay. uh, yeah deal with it when we meet up because I didn't have time. <laughs> yep. uh, but first everyone change your names, change your thingy and to keep it the same. Pishin, would you mind yep, doing I know what you're capital P? Say. Thank you so yep. much. Mm -hmm. If you can't change your name, let me know and I can do it for you. And let's go through audio. So I'm going to mute everybody while I check everyone's audio real quick. Okay. My. Sorry. And um, let's do you, Stu, first. Bravo, Charlotte Ivanovna. Bravo. Excellent, thank you. Gaev, let's check you out. Light in the corner pocket. Yes, you sound great, thank you. Peter, let's hear you. Whether the weather is hot or whether the weather is cold, we'll be together whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Yes, I would slow down, but yes, you sound good. Fierce. Just, just a drill. <laughs> Fierce, your turn. Uh, 
Cannot hear you, fears. Okay, there we go. I didn't know I had to un unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, and you sound great. Thank great, you, thank Fears. You. Okay, Anya. Testing, testing. You're loud and you're clear. Great. Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> Pishin, your turn. How about that now? <laughs> I am the very bottom of the modern major general of information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. Yes, I hear you. Thank you. Charlotta. My dog eats nuts. <laughs> yes, she does. Thank you, Charlotta. <laughs> Epikodov. Climate is a favorite. Is, this climate is indisposed to us, even this once. Yes, I can talk. Words, mouth sounds. They're all good. <laughs> Thank you, Epikodov. <laughs> um, Varia. How cold it is. My hands are quite numb. Perfect. Lopakin. Uh, the train's arrived. Thank God. What's the time? Excellent. Thank you. Yasha. Dobre tien, comrades. <laughs> Perfect. Thank Marich. you, Yasha. Could someone please message Aaron slash uh, Dun Yasha if y'all have her number or anything to see if she could hopefully get here. Thank you so much. Narrator, last but not least. Hi. Could you say a sentence? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the action takes place on Lubov's estate. Perfecto. Yes, I hear you. Thank you. I love your Rod Serling. I'm Thank telling you. you. I, I, I honestly didn't know who that a person was until you mentioned it, Jared. So, ah, you're so. a young man. Just trying the um, the music and and sound cues real quick, and you can thumbs up, thumbs down if it sounds not good or good. Oh, I should have the volume. That would be great. <laughs> Nice. Sounds good. Yep. I sound like the tree being chopped down. Okay, though. We'll do Nancy, we're doing four, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to wait till you bow and then I'll stop. Okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. No, Excellent. Any questions? Just, I just put mine in the chat. Jared, mm. is there a live stream YouTube link? Nope, there's no live stream YouTube link. This is just Zoom. Yeah, they can just... come here, or if they can't come and watch it live today, there will be, it will be uploaded to YouTube by tomorrow. All right. My wife is trying to watch it as it's happening. So mm -hmm. if you see my name appear, but be muted with the camera shut off, it's my wife. Perfect. I mean, I'm if it's not Yasha, it's good. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to go mute myself here and then you join up there. I'll be right back. Uh, Aaron's having some problems getting in. Okay. Yeah. Cause I don't see her even in the waiting room. No, she's having definitely having problems getting in. I'm, I'm writing to her now. Is she maybe using another character's name and maybe Jackie doesn't recognize No, no, no. Her? There's okay. literally no one in the waiting room except for Robert. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, okay. She's not here. Okay. But now she is. She just arrived. Oh, okay. I think okay. it's her computer. Probably that's being slow. Uh, Jared, as for you, if we could get a little bit of light on your face, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, you really want to put light on this thing? Yeah. Um, because you were talking about the backgrounds and it not potentially like the background works, but I think if there's a little bit more light on you, so see how I'm fading. Uh, yeah, let me try it. Hang on, just a sec. Okay. Hi, Aaron. 
you made it. Do you want me to change your name or can you do it for yourself? And if you wouldn't mind unmuting, I'm gonna check your audio. Real audio quick. should be working well? Yes, your audio works fine. We can see then. Jen in the background. She won't be in the background when we start. Okay. Okay. We so just letting you know in two minutes we're going to record the introductions. I've already recorded all the beginning stuff. So I'll put in the chat. Can you hold it? Thanks. The introduction. So you know the order again. All right, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a little more light. Is that all right? Better? I mean, I'm still fading, but. No, I see you. no you're fine. You, you barely right. fade. You may be able to do that advanced setting adjust for low light. I just Let noticed there's an, uh, an advanced setting called adjust for low light. Yes, yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. Actually, mine is checked. Yours is checked. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks, though. But you may be able to slide it over. Is there's a slider there? On mine, it just says auto and, and uh, manual, and I pushed it. If you set it to manual. I'm there. And Tell then me, slide. Yeah, you're right. You got it. Tell me what you think. I mean, it was almost all the way up. Now it's all Looks the way good. Up. It's, it's about as good as it's going to get, right? <laughs> I'm fading. My hair is fading, but that's okay. My uh, green screen, the leg broke, so it doesn't stand up anymore. So this is without a green screen. No worries. It looks good. Any other questions before we do introductions? Right there. No? My audio just uh, kicked out. Uh, can anybody hear me? Yep, we yep. can still hear you. Awesome. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay, cool. So I put in the chat the order that we're going in. And just as a remi like reminder, if anything technological happen, because you know, Zoom and internet and blah, uh, someone will pick up for you, okay? So no take backs, we're not going backward. If someone has taken it for you, just keep it moving, keep it moving, come back when you can, no stress, no worries. So this is the order. Uh, I love that we all have the same backgrounds for those of us who can, this is beautiful. So let's try it. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Elizabeth, and I will be playing Lubov. Hi, I'm Sophia Manicone, and I'm playing Anya. Hello, I'm Caroline Adams, and I'm playing Baria. I'm Paul Brewster, and I'll be playing Gaev. I'm Ernie Molina, and I'll be playing Lopaki. Hi, Hi my name is. Oh. I'm sorry. No, I, I missed it. Dude. Sorry. Go ahead. You're next. I will fight you for it. I will fight you for it. Yeah. My name is Thomas Weaver, and I am pay playing Peter Trofimov. I am Jared Johnson. I am playing Pisha. I'm Nancy Summers, and I am playing Charlotta. I'm Dan Hubble, and I'm playing Epikodov. I'm Aaron Klarner, and I'm playing Dunyasha. I'm Bob Rosenberg, and I'm playing Fierce. I'm Sean Eustace. I'm playing Yasha. I'm Stuart Fisher. I'm the un I'm playing the ensemble, and I also directed the production. And I'm Emmanuel Catlin, and I'll be the narrator. Beautiful. Any questions about that? No? OK, let's do it for realsies. I'm going to record in three, two, one. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Elizabeth, and I will be playing Lubov. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophia Manicone, and I'll be playing Anya. Hello, I'm Caroline Adams, and I'm playing Varya. Hi, I'm Paul Brewster, and I'll be playing Gaev. Hello, I'm Ernie Molina, and I'll be playing Lopakin. Privet, my name is Thomas Weaver, and I will be playing Peter Trofimov. Hi, my name is Jared Johnson. I'll be playing Pishin. My name is Nancy Summers, and I'll be playing Charlotta. 
Hi, my name is Daniel Hubble. I'll be playing Epi Kodov. My name is Aaron Klarner, and I'll be playing Danyasha. Hi, I'm Bob Rosenberg, and I'll be playing Fierce. Hi, I'm Sean Eustace. I'll be playing Yasha. I'm Stuart Fisher. I'm in the ensemble, and I also directed the production. And I'm Emmanuel Catalan, and I'll be your narrator. It takes place on the of Renyevsky's estate. The train's arrived. Thank God. What's the time? It'll soon be two. It's late already. Uh, how much was the train late? Two hours at least. Ugh. Oh, I've made such a rotten mess of it. I came here on purpose to meet them at the station and then overslept myself in my chair. It's a pity. I wish you'd awakened me. I thought you'd gone away. I think I hear them coming. No, they've got to collect their luggage and so on. Lubov Andreevna has been living abroad for five years. I don't know what she'll be like now. <laughs> She's a good sort, an easy, simple person. Now, I remember when I was a boy of 15, my father, who is dead, he used to keep a shop in the village here, hit me on the face with his fist and my nose bled. We'd gone into the yard together for something or other, and he was a little drunk. Lubov Andreevna, as I remember her now, was still young and very thin, and, and, and she took me to the washstand here in this room, the nursery. She said, don't cry, little man. It'll be all right in time for your wedding. <laughs> little man. <laughs> My father was a peasant, it's true, but here I am in a white waistcoat and yellow shoes, a pearl out of an oyster. I'm rich now with lots of money, but just think about it and examine me and you'll find I'm still a peasant down to the marrow of my bones. <laughs> uh, I've been reading this book, but understood nothing. I read and fell asleep. The dogs didn't sleep all night. They know that they're coming. What's up with you, Dunyasha? Oh, my hands are shaking. I feel faint. You're too sensitive, Dunyasha. You dress just like a lady, and you do your hair like one, too. You oughtn't. You should know your place. They're to go into the dining room. Gives and you... Gives the bouquet to Dunyasha. And you'll bring me some kvass? Very well. There's a frost this morning. Three degrees, and the cherry tree's all in flower. I can't approve of our climate. I can't. Our climate is indisposed to favor us even this once. And, Ermolai Alexeyevich, allow me to say to you, in addition, that I bought myself some boots two days ago, and I beg to assure you that they squeak in a perfectly unbearable manner. What shall I put on them? Go away, you bore me. Some misfortune happens to me every day, but I don't complain, I'm used to it, and I can smile. I, I, shall, I shall go. Knocks uh, over a chair. Um, there, there you see it. If I may use the word, what circumstances I am in, so to speak. It is simply marvelous. I may confess to you, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that Epikhodov has proposed to me. Ah. I don't know what to do about it. He's a nice young man, but every now and again, when he begins talking, you can't understand a word he's saying. I think I like him. He's madly in love with me. He's an unlucky man. Every day something happens. We tease him about it. They call him two in 20 troubles. There they come, I think. They're coming? Oh, what's the matter with me? I'm cold all over. Uh, there they are, right enough. Let's go and meet them. Will she know me? We haven't seen each other for five years. Oh, I shall faint in a moment. Oh, I'm fainting. 
two carriages are heard driving up to the house. Let's go in there. Uh, let's come through here. Do you remember what room this is, Mother? The nursery. <gasps> How cold it is. My hands are quite numb. Your rooms, the white one and the violet one, are just as they used to be, Mother. My dear nursery. Oh, you beautiful room. I used to sleep here when I was a baby. And here I am, a little girl again. Oh, mwah, mwah. And Varya is just as she used to be, just like a nun. And I knew Danyasha. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> the train was uh, two hours late. Oh, how's that for punctuality? My dog eats nuts, too. <laughs> Think of that now. <laughs> oh, Anya, we did have to wait for you. I didn't get any sleep for four nights on the journey. I'm awfully cold. You went away during Lent when it was snowing and frosty, but now, oh, darling, oh, we did have to wait for you, my joy, my pet. I must tell you at once, I can't bear to wait a minute. Something else now. The clerk, Epikorov, proposed to me at Easter. Always the same. I've lost all my hairpins. I, I don't know what to think about it. He loves me. He loves me so much. My room, my window says if I'd never gone away. I'm at home. Tomorrow morning, I'll get up and have a run in the garden. <sighs> If only I could get to sleep. I didn't sleep the whole journey. I was so bothered. Peter Sergeyevich came two days ago. Peter? <laughs> he sleeps in the bathhouse. He lives there. He said he was afraid he'd be in the way. I, I ought to wake him, but Varya Mikhailovna told me not to. Don't wake him, she said. <laughs> Danyasha, some coffee. Quick. Mother wants some. This minute. Well... You've come, glory be to God, home again. My darling is back again. My pretty one is back. I, I did have an awful time, I tell you. Oh, I can just imagine it. I went away in Holy Week. It was very cold then. Charlotta talked the whole way and would go on performing her tricks. Why did you tie Charlotta onto me? Oh, well, you couldn't go alone, darling, at 17. We went to Paris. It's cold there and snowing. I talk French perfectly horribly. My mother lives on the fifth floor. I go to there, go to her and find her there with, with various fresh Frenchmen, women, and a book and everything in tobacco smoke with no comfort at all. I, I suddenly became very sorry for mother. So sorry that I took her head in my arms and hugged her and wouldn't let her go. And then mother started hugging me in and crying. Don't, don't say any more. Don't say any more. I already sold her villa near Mentone. She's nothing left, nothing. And I haven't a co-pack either. We only just managed to get here. And mother won't understand. We had dinner at a station and she asked for all the expensive things and tipped the waiters one ruble each. And Charlotta too. Yasha wants his share too. It's too bad. Oh, uh, mother's got a footman now, Yasha. We've brought him here. I saw the wretch. <laughs> How's business? Has the interest been paid? <sighs> Not much chance of that. Oh, God. Oh, God. The place will be sold in August. Oh, God. Moo. <sighs> I'd like to. Are you? Oh. Has, has he proposed to you? But he loves you. Why don't you make up your minds? Why do you keep on waiting? I think that it will all come to nothing. He's a busy man. I'm not his affair. He pays no attention to me. Bless the man. I don't want to see him. But everybody talks about our marriage. Everybody congratulates me. And there's nothing in it at all. It's all like a dream. You've, you've got a brooch like a bee. Mother bought it. In Paris, I went up in a balloon. My darlings come back. My pretty ones come back. Oh, 
I go about all day looking after the house. I think all the time, if only you could marry a rich man, then I'd be happy and would go away somewhere by myself. Then to Kiev, to Moscow, and so on, from one holy place to another. <laughs> I'd tramp and tramp. That would be splendid. The, the birds are singing in the garden. What time is it now? <sighs> it must be getting on for three. Time you went to sleep, darling. Splendid. May I go this way? I hardly knew you, Yasha. You've changed abroad. Um, and who are you? When you went away, I was only so high. And then Yasha, the daughter of Teodor Kozayedov. You don't remember. Oh, <laughs> you little cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> he embraces it. Yasha goes out quickly. What's that? Who oh, can a saucer? Uh, it, it may bring luck. We must tell Mother that Peter's here. No, oh, I told them not to wake him. Father died six years ago, and a month later, my brother Grisha drowned in the river. Such a dear little boy of seven. Mother couldn't bear it. She went away. Away without looking around. How I understand her. If only she knew. And Peter Trofimov was Grisha's tutor. He might tell her that... Uh, the mistress is going to have some food here. Is the coffee ready? You, where's the cream? Oh, dear me. Oh, you bungler. Uh, back from Paris. The master went to Paris once in a carriage. <laughs> What are you talking about, Fears? I beg your pardon. Uh, uh, the mistress is home again. I've lived to see her. I don't care if I die now. <laughs> Let me remember now. Red into the corner, twice into the center. Right into the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, once upon a time, you and I used to both to sleep in this room. Mm. Oh, now I'm 51. Oh, it does seem strange. Yes, time does go. Uh, who does? I said that time does go. Oh, it smells of patchouli here. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Good night, mother. My lovely little one. Mwah. Mwah. Glad to be at home. I can't get over it. <laughs> Good night, Uncle. Oh, God be with you. How you do resemble your mother. Oh, you were just like her at your age, her age Luba. <laughs> She's awfully tired. It's a very long journey. Well, sirs, it's getting on for three. Quite time you went. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the same as ever, Varia. Oh, <laughs> mwah, mwah. I'll have some coffee now, then we'll all go. Beers lays a cushion under her feet. Thank you, dear. I'm used to coffee. I drink it day and night. Thank you, dear old man. Mwah. I'll go and see if they've brought in all the luggage. <sighs> Is it really I who am sitting here? Mm. <laughs> I want to jump about and wave my arms. But suppose I'm dreaming. God knows I love my own country. I love it deeply. I couldn't look out the railroad carriage. I cried so much. Still, I must have my coffee. Thank you, Fierce. Thank you, dear old man. I'm so glad you're still with us. Uh, the day before yesterday. He doesn't hear well. <laughs> uh, I've got to go off to Kharkov by the five o'clock train. I I'm awfully mm -hmm. sorry. I should like to have a look at you, to gossip a little. You're as fine looking as ever. Mm. Even finer looking. <laughs> Dressed in Paris fashions. Oh. Confounded oh. all. <laughs> uh, your brother... Leonid Andreevich says I'm a snob, a user, but that's absolutely nothing to me. Let him talk. 
Only I wish you would believe in me as you once did, that your wonderful touching eyes would look at me as they did before. Oh, merciful God, my father was a serf to your grandfather and your own father, but you, you more than anybody else did so much for me once upon a time that I've forgotten everything and love you as if you belong to my family and even more. I can't sit still. I'm not in a state to do it. I'll never survive this happiness. You can laugh at me. I'm a silly woman. Mm. My dear little cupboard. Mwah. <laughs> My little table. Oh, nurse, nurse has died in your absence. Yes. Bless her soul. I heard by letter. And Anastasius has died too. Peter Corsoy has left me and now lives in town with a commissioner of police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My daughter, uh, Dashenka, sends the love. <sighs> I want to say something very pleasant, very delightful to you. I'm going away at once. I haven't much time, but I'll tell you all about it in two or three words. As you already know, your cherry orchard is to be sold to pay your debts, and the sale is fixed for August 22nd. But you needn't be alarmed, dear madam. You may sleep in peace. There's a way out. Here's my plan. Please, attend carefully. Your estate is only 13 miles from the town. The railway runs by it. And if the cherry orchard and the land by the river are broken up into building lots and are then leased off for villas, you'll get at least 25,000 rubles a year profit out of it. How oh, utterly <laughs> absurd. I don't understand you at all, Ermolai Alexeyevich. You will get... 25 rubles a year for each desitin from the leaseholders at the very least. And if you advertise now, I'm willing to bet that you won't have a vacant lot left by autumn. They'll all go. In a word, you're saved. I congratulate you. Only, of course, you'll have to put things straight and clean up. For instance, you'll have to pull down all the old buildings, this house, which isn't any use to anybody now. And Cut down the old cherry orchard. Cut it down, my dear oh. man. You must excuse me, but you don't understand anything at all. If there's anything interesting or remarkable in the whole province, it's this cherry orchard of ours. The only remarkable thing about the orchard is it's very large. It bears fruit only every other year, and even then you don't know what to do with them. Nobody buys any. Well, this cherry orchard is mentioned in the encyclopedia. If we can't think of anything and don't make up our minds to anything, then on August 22nd, both the cherry orchard and the whole estate will be up for auction. Make up your mind. I swear there's no other way out. I'll swear it again. In the old days, 40 or 50 years back, uh, they dried the cherries, soaked them and pickled them and made jam of them. And mm -hmm. it used to happen that they- Be uh, quiet, fears. And then we'd send the dried cherries off in carts to mm -hmm. Moscow and Kharkov and money and the dried cherries were soft, <laughs> juicy, sweet and nicely mm. scented. Mm. They knew the way. What was the way? Forgotten, nobody remembers. Oh. Lubov, what about Paris, eh? Did you eat frogs? I ate crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> I think of that now. <laughs> Up to now, the villages, were, there were only the gentry and the laborers, and now the people who live in the villas have arrived. All towns now, even the small ones, are surrounded by villas. And it's safe to say that in 20 years time, the villa resident will be all over the place. At present, he sits on his balcony and drinks tea, but it may well come to pass that he'll begin to cultivate his patch of land. And then your cherry orchard will be happy, rich, splendid. Oh. What rot. <sighs> there are two telegrams for you, little mother. Here they are. They're from Paris. Oh, I'm done with Paris. Do you know, Luba, 
how old this case is? <laughs> a week ago, I took out the bottom drawer. I looked and saw the figures burned out in it. That case was made exactly a hundred years ago. <laughs> what do you think of that? What? We could celebrate its jubilee. Huh? There's no soul of its own, but still, say what you will. Oh, it's a fine bookcase. Uh, wow, a hundred uh, years. Think uh, of that, think of that. Yes, it's a real thing. My dear and honored case, uh, mm. I congratulate you on your existence which has already for more than a hundred years been directed towards the, the bright ideals of good and justice. Oh, your silent call to productive labor has not grown less in a hundred years. Oh. Oh. <laughs> During which you have, you have upheld virtue and faith in a better future to the generations of our race. Oh, educating us up to the ideals of goodness and, and to the knowledge of a common consciousness. Yes. <laughs> You're just the same as ever, Leon. <laughs> oh, oh, off the white to the right. Oh, in the corner pocket. Red ball goes into the middle pocket. <laughs> uh, it's time I went. Oh. <clears throat> uh, will you take your pills now? Ah, uh, you 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 oughtn't you oughtn't take medicines, dear fellow. Mm. They do you neither harm no good. Give them here. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> there. You're off your head! <laughs> I've taken all the pills. <laughs> <laughs> Gormandizer. <laughs> they were here in Easter week and ate uh, half a pail full of cucumbers. What's he driving at? Oh, he's been mumbling away for three years. We're <sighs> used to that. Senile decay. Mm. Oh. Excuse me, Charlotte Ivanovna. I haven't said how do you do to you yet. If you let people kiss your hand, then they'll bend your elbow and then your shoulder and then... <laughs> <laughs> My luck's out today. <laughs> Show us a trick, Charlotte Ivanovna. Uh, Charlotte, do us a trick. It's not necessary. I want to go to bed. Oh. We shall see each other in three weeks. Now, goodbye, Lubov Andreevna. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. Gaev, see you again. Au revoir, Pishin. Uh, Varya, Fierce, Yasha, I don't want to go away. And Lubov, if you think about the villas and make up your mind, then just let me know, and I'll raise a loan of 50,000 rubles at once. Think about it seriously. Do go now. I, I'm going, I'm going. Snob. <laughs> Still, I, I beg pardon. Varya's going to marry him. Mm -hmm. He's Varya's young man. Uh, don't talk too much, uncle. Why not, Varya? I should be very glad. He's a good man. <laughs> ah, to speak the honest truth, he's a worthy man. Mm. <laughs> and my Dashenka also says that. She, she says a lot of things. I, but still, dear madam, if you could lend me 240 rubles to pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow. Oh, we haven't got it. We haven't got it. It's quite true. I have nothing at all. <laughs> I will find it all right. I never lose hope. I used to think everything's lost. Now I'm a dead man when lo and behold, a railway was built over my land and they paid me for it. Mm. And something else will happen today or tomorrow. Dorshenka may win 20,000 rubles. She's got a lottery ticket. 
The coffee's all gone. We can go to bed. Leonid Andreevich, you put on the wrong trousers again. What am I to do with you? Anya's asleep. The sun has risen already. Mm. It isn't cold. Look, little mother, what lovely trees in the air. Ah, the starlings are singing. The whole garden's white. <laughs> you haven't forgotten, Luba. There's that long avenue going straight. Oh, straight like a stretched strap. It shines on moonlit night. Do you remember? <laughs> you haven't forgotten. Oh, my childhood, days of my innocence. In this nursery, I used to sleep. I used to look out from here into the orchard. Happiness used to wake with me every morning. And then it was just as it is now. Nothing has changed. <laughs> it's all, all white. Oh, my orchard. After the dark autumns and the cold winters, you're young again, full of happiness. The angels of heaven haven't left you. If only I could take my heavy burden off my breast and shoulders. If I could forget my past. Yes. <laughs> and they'll sell this orchard to pay off debts. How strange it seems. Look, there's my dead mother going in the orchard, dressed in white. <laughs> that, that's she. Where? God bless you, little mother. There's nobody there. I, I thought I saw somebody. On the right, at the turning by the summer house, a, little, a white little tree bent down, looking just like a woman. What a marvelous garden. White masses of flower, the blue sky. I only want to show myself and I'll go away. I was told to wait till the morning, but I didn't have the patience. It's Peter Trofimov. Peter Trofimov, once the tutor of your Grisha. Have I changed so much? Lubrov embraces him and cries softly. That's enough, Luba. That's but enough. I, I told you, Peter, to wait until tomorrow. My Grisha, my boy. Grisha, my boy. What are we to do, little mother? It is the will of God. It's all right. It's all right. My boy is dead. He was drowned. Why? Why, my friend? Anya's asleep in there. I'm speaking so loudly, making such a noise. Well, Peter, what's made you look so bad? Why have you grown so old? In the train, an old woman called me a decayed gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> you were quite a boy then, a nice little student, and now your hair is not at all thick and you wear spectacles. Are you really still a student? I, I suppose I shall always be a student. <laughs> well, let's go to bed. <laughs> and you've grown older, Leonid. Yes, yes, we've all got to go to bed now. Oh, 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 my gout. I, <laughs> I'll stay the night here if... If only Lupa Andreevna, my dear, you could get me 240 rubles tomorrow morning. <laughs> Still the same story. 240 rubles to pay the interest on my mortgage. I haven't any money, dear man. I'll give it back. It's a small sum. Well, then, Leonid will give it to you. <laughs> Let him have it, Leonid. By all means, hold out your hand. Why not? He wants it, he'll give it back. Oh. Oh, my sister hasn't lost the habit of throwing money about. Oh, 
stand off. You smell of poultry. You are just the same as ever, Leonid Andreevich. Really? What's he saying? Yasha, your mother's come from the village. She's been sitting in the servant's room since yesterday and wants to see you. Oh, bless the woman. Oh, shameless man. A lot of use there is in her coming. She might have come tomorrow just as well. Oh, well, mother hasn't altered a scrap. She's just as she always was. She'd give away everything if the idea only entered her head. Yes. <laughs> oh, if there's any illness for which people offer many remedies, you may be sure that particular illness is incurable. I think it, well, I work my brain to the hardest. I, well, I, I've several remedies, very many, and, and that, that really means I've none at all. It, it would be nice to inherit a fortune from somebody. <laughs> it would be nice to marry our Anna to a rich man. It would be nice for me to go to Yaroslav and, oh, and try my luck with my aunt, the Countess. The, my aunt is very, very rich. If only God helped us. <laughs> oh, don't cry. My aunt's very rich, but she doesn't like us. <laughs> and my sister in the first place married an advocate, not a noble. Well, she not only married a man who was not noble, but, but she behaved herself in a way that cannot be described as proper. Oh, she's nice and kind and charming, and I'm very fond of her. Oh, but say what you will in her favor, and you still have to admit that she's wicked. Huh? You can feel it in her slightest movements. Anya's in the doorway. Really? <laughs> well, it, it, it's curious. <laughs> well, something got in my right eye. I, I can't see properly out of it. Oh. And on Thursday, when I was at the district court... Oh, why aren't you in bed, Anya? Can't sleep, it's no good. My darling, <laughs> my child. Oh, oh, oh. You're, you're not my niece. You're my angel. Oh, you're my all. Oh, believe in me, believe. I do believe in you, Uncle. <sighs> Everybody loves you and respects you, but... Uncle dear, you ought to say nothing, no more than that. What you were saying just now about my mother, your, your own sister, why do you say those things? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, really, uh, it, it, it was awful. Uh, save me, my God. And only now, I, I just made a speech before a bookcase. Oh, it's so silly. And only when I finished I knew how silly it was. Yes, Uncle dear, you really ought to say less. Keep quiet, that's all. You'd be so much happier in yourself if only you kept quiet. All right, all right. I'll be quiet. <laughs> I'll be quiet. But, but, but let's talk business. Um, on Thursday, I, I was in the district court, and a lot of us met there together, and we began to talk of, of this and that and the other. And now I think I can arrange a loan to pay the interest into the bank. Oh, if only God would help us. Well, I'll go on Tuesday. I'll talk with them about it again. Oh. Don't hide. Oh, your mother will have to talk to Lopaki. Well, he... Of course, would we'll refuse. I, and when you've rested, um, you'll go to Yaroslav to the Countess, your grandmother. <laughs> so you see, we have three irons in the fire and we'll be safe. We'll pay up the interest, I'm certain. <laughs> I swear, on my honor, nothing will happen. <laughs> ah, the estate will not be sold. I swear on my happiness. Oh, 
Here's my hat. You may call me a dishonorable wretch if I let go, let it go to auction. I swear by all I am. How good and clever you are, Uncle. I'm happy now. I'm happy. All's well. Leonid Andreevich, don't you fear God? When are you going to bed? Oh, soon, soon. Uh, you go away, fears. I'll undress myself. Well, children, bye. Bye bye. I'll give you the details tomorrow. But let's go to bed now. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I'm a man of the 80s. People don't praise those years much. But I can still say I've suffered for my beliefs. The peasants don't love me for nothing, I assure you. We've got to learn to know the peasants. We ought to learn how. You're you doing it again, Uncle. Be quiet, Uncle. I am it, Andrevich. I'm coming, I'm coming. Go to bed now. <laughs> Off two cushions into the middle. I turn over a new leaf. I'm quieter now. I don't want to go to Yaroslav. I don't like grandmother. But I'm calm now, thanks to Uncle. It's time to go to sleep. I'll go. There, there's been an unpleasantness here while you were away. In the old servants part of the house, as you know, only the old people live. Little old Ephim and Polya and Evstigenye and Karp as well. They started letting some tramps or other spend the night there, and I said nothing. Then I heard that they were saying that I had ordered them to be fed on peas and nothing else. For meanness, you see. And it was all Evstigenye's doing. Very well, I thought. If that's what the matter is, just you wait. So, I call Evstigenye. He comes. What's this, I say? Evstigenye, you old fool. Oh, Anya, dear. Oh, she's dropped off. Let's go to bye-bye. Come along. Oh, my darling's gone to sleep. Come on. Oh, shh. She's asleep. Come on, dear. I'm so tired. All the bells. Uncle, dear. Mother and uncle. Come on, dear. Come on. My son, my spring.
In a field, on one side rise dark poplars. Behind them begins the cherry orchard. It is close on sunset. Charlotte has unslung a rifle from her shoulders and is putting to rights the buckle on the strap. I haven't a real passport. I don't know how old I am, and I think I'm young. When I was a little girl, my father and mother used to go around fairs and give very good performances. And I used to do the salto mortale and various other things. And when Papa and Mama died, a German lady took to me and began to teach me. I liked it. I grew up and became a governess. And where I came from and who I am, I don't know who my parents were. Perhaps they weren't married. I don't know. I don't know anything. Hmm. I do want to talk, but I haven't anyone to talk to. I haven't anybody at all. What's this noisy earth to be? What matter, friends or foes? I do like playing on the mandolin. A guitar, not a mandolin. Oh, for the enamored madman. This is a mandolin. <laughs> oh, that the heart was warmed by all the flames of love returned. <laughs> These people sing terribly, full like jackals. Well, Yasha, it must be nice to live abroad. Yes, certainly. I cannot differ from you there. <sighs> Perfectly natural. Abroad, everything is in full complexity. Oh, that goes without saying. I'm an educated man. I read various remarkable uh, books, but I cannot understand the direction I myself want to go, whether to live or shoot myself, as it were. So in case I always carry a revolver around with me. Here it is. Oh, oh I, I, I've done. Now I go. You, Epikotov, are a very clever man and very terrible. Women must be madly in love with you. <laughs> but these wise ones are all so stupid. <laughs> I've no one to talk to. I'm always alone, alone. <laughs> I've nobody at all. And I don't know who I am or why I live. As a matter of fact, uh, independently of everything else, I must express my feeling, among other things, that fate has been as pitiless in her dealings with me as a storm to a small ship. Suppose, let us grant, I am wrong. And why did I wake up this morning to give an example and behold an enormous spider on my chest, like, like, like that? Ugh. And if I do drink some kvass, why is it that there is all, bound to be something of the most indelicate nature in it? such as a beetle. Have you read Buckle? I should like to trouble you, Avdotya Fedorovna, for two words. Say on. I should prefer to be alone with you. <laughs> Very well, only um, first bring me my little cloak. It's by the cupboard. It's, it's a little damp here. Very well, I'll bring it. Now I know what to do with my revolver. Mm. Oh, two and twenty troubles. A silly man between you and me and the gatepost. <laughs> I hope to goodness he won't shoot himself. I'm so nervous. I'm so worried. I went into service when I was quite a little girl, and now I'm not used to common life. My hands are white, white as a lady's. So tender and delicate now, respectable and afraid of everything. Oh, I'm so frightened. I don't know what will happen to my nerves if you deceive me, Yasha. Little cucumber. Of course, every girl must respect herself. There's nothing more I dislike than a badly behaved girl. I'm awfully in love with you. You're educated. You can talk about everything. Yes. I think this. If a girl loves anybody, then that means she's immoral. It's nice to smoke a cigar out in the open air. Mm. Somebody's coming. It's the mistress and people with her. Yasha <laughs> embraces him. 
go to the house as if you've been bathing in the river. Go by this path or they'll meet you and will think I've been meeting you. And I can't stand that sort of thing. My head's aching because of your cigar. You must make up your mind definitely. And there's no time to waste. The question is perfectly plain. Are you willing to let the land for villas or no? Just one word, yes or no. Oh, Just one word. Oh, smoking horrible cigars here. Oh, they, they've built that railway. Wow, that's made this place very handy. Mm. Oh, went to town and had lunch. <laughs> Red in the middle. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, oh, I'd like to go in now and have just one game. You'll have time. It's just one word. Give me an answer. Oh, really? <laughs> I had a lot of money yesterday, but there's very little today. My poor Varia feeds everybody on milk soup to save money. In the kitchen... The old people only get peas and I spend recklessly. Drops the purse, scattered oh. gold coins. There they are all over the place. Permit me to pick them up. Oh, please do, Yasha. And why did I go and have lunch there? A horrid restaurant with band and tablecloth smelling of soap. Why do you drink so much, Leon? Why do you eat so much? Why do you talk so much? You talk again too much in the restaurant today. And it wasn't at all to the point about the 70s and about decadence. And to whom? Talking to the waiters about decadence. Oh, yes. It, it, it can't be cured. Uh, well, that's obvious. <laughs> What's the matter? Why do you keep twisting, Yasha? Why do you keep twisting about in front of me? I can't listen to your voice without laughing. Oh, either he or I. Oh, ah. go, go away, Yasha. Get out of this. Gives curse to the boat. I'll go at once. <laughs> this minute. Uh, that rich man, Riganov, is preparing to buy your estate. They say he'll come to the sale himself. Where did you hear that? They say so in the town. Uh, our Yaroslav hand has promised to send something, but but, uh, but I don't know when or how much. How much will she send? A hundred thousand rubles? Or two, perhaps? I'd be glad of ten or fifteen thousand. Hmm. You must excuse my saying so, but I've never met such frivolous people as you before, <laughs> or anybody so unbusinesslike and peculiar. Here I am telling you in plain language that your estate will be sold, and you don't seem to understand. What are we to do? Tell us what. I tell you every day. I say the same thing every day. Both the cherry orchard and the land must be leased off for villas, and at once, immediately, the auction is, star is staring you in the face. Understand, once you do definitely make up your minds to the villas, then you'll have as much money as you want, and you'll be saved. Villas and villa residents, it's so vulgar. Excuse me. Oh. I entirely agree with you. I must cry or yell or faint. I can't stand it. You're too much for me. Gaius, you're an old woman. <laughs> 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 old woman. <laughs> No, don't go away. Do stop, be a dear, please. Perhaps we'll find some way out. What's the good of trying to think? Please don't go away. It's nicer when you're here. I keep on waiting for something to happen, as if the house is going to collapse over our heads. Oh, oh double in the corner. Uh, oh, across the <laughs> we have been too sinful. What sins have you committed? Well, they say that I've uh, eaten all my substance in, in sugar candies. <laughs> 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 oh, my sins. I've always scattered money about without holding myself in. 
like a mad woman. And I married a man who made nothing but debts. My husband died of champagne. He drank terribly. And to my misfortune, I fell in love with another man and went off with him. And just at that time, it was my first punishment, a blow that hit me right on the head. Here in the river, my boy was drowned and I went away, quite away, never to return, never to see this river again. I shut my eyes and ran without thinking, but he ran after me without pity, without respect. I bought a villa near Montone because he fell ill there. And for three years, I knew no rest either by day or night. The sick man wore me out and my soul dried up. And last year, when they had sold the villa to pay my debts, I went away to Paris and there, he robbed me of all I had and threw me over and went off with another woman. <laughs> I tried to poison myself. It was so silly, so shameful. <laughs> And suddenly, I longed to be back in Russia, my own land, with my little girl. <laughs> Lord, Lord, be merciful to me. Forgive me my sins. Punish me no more. I had this today from Paris. He begs me forgiveness. He implores me to return. Oh, no. Don't I hear music? Ah, this is a celebrated Jewish band. You remember, um, four violins, a flute, and a double bass. So it still exists. It would ah. be nice if they came along some evening. I can't hear. For the money will the Germans make a Frenchman of a Russian. <laughs> now, I saw such an awfully funny thing at the theater last night. I'm quite sure there wasn't anything at all funny. You ought to go and see plays. You ought to go and look at yourself. What a gray life you lead. What a lot of talk. You talk unnecessarily. It's true. To speak the straight truth, we live a silly life. My father was a peasant, an idiot. He understood nothing. He didn't teach me. He was always drunk and always used, always used the stick on me. Uh, in point of fact, I'm a fool and an idiot too. I've never learned anything. My handwriting is bad. I write so that I'm quite ashamed before people, like, like a pig. You ought to get married, my friend. <laughs> yes, that's true. Why not to our Varia? She's a nice girl. Yes. She's quite homely in her ways, works all day, and what matters most, she's in love with you, and you've liked her for a long time. Well, I don't mind. She's a nice girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm offered a place in the bank. Six thousand rubles a year. <laughs> Did you hear? What's the matter with you? Stay where you are. Please, uh, Leonard Andreevich, uh, uh, put this on. It's damp. Oh, you're a nuisance, old man. It's all very well. You went away this morning without telling me. How old you've grown, Fierce. I beg your pardon? She says you've grown very old. I've been alive a long time. They were already getting ready to marry me before your father was born. <laughs> and when the emancipation came, I was already first valet. Only I didn't agree with the emancipation and remained with my people. I remember everybody was happy, but they didn't know why. It was very good for them in the old days. At any rate, they used to beat them. Rather, <laughs> the peasants kept their distance from the masters, and the masters kept their distance from the peasants. 
but now everything's all anyhow, and you can't understand anything. Be quiet, fears. <laughs> oh, I've got to go to town tomorrow. I've been promised an introduction to a general who may lend me money on a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will come of it, and you won't pay your interest, don't worry. He's talking rubbish. There's no general at all. Oh, here they are. Mother's sitting down here. <gasps> come, come, my dears. Oh, if you two only knew how much I love you. Sit down next to me like that. Our eternal student is always with the ladies. That's not your business. He'll soon be 50, and he's still a student. <laughs> Leave off your silly jokes. Getting angry, eh? Silly. Okay. Shut up, can't you? <laughs> I wonder what you think of me. I think, Yermolai Alexeyevich, that you are a rich man, and you'll soon be a millionaire. Just as the wild beast, which eats everything it finds, is needed for changes to take place in matter, so you are needed too. <laughs> <laughs> well, better tell us something about the planets, Peter. No! Let's go on with yesterday's talk. About what? Not about the proud man! Mm. Yesterday we talked for a long time, but we didn't come to anything in the end. There's something mystical about the proud man, in your sense. Perhaps you are right from your point of view. But if you take the matter simply, without complicating it, then what pride can there be? What sense can there be in it, if a man is imperfectly made, physiologically speaking, if in the vast majority of cases he is coarse and stupid and deeply unhappy? We must stop admiring one another. We must work. Nothing uh more. You'll die all the same. Mm, who knows? And what does it mean, you'll die? Perhaps a man has a hundred senses, and when he dies, only the five known to us are destroyed, and the remaining 95 are left alive. How clever of you, Peter. <laughs> oh, awfully. The human race progresses, perfecting its powers. Everything that is unattainable now will someday be near at hand and comprehensible. But we must work. We must help with all our strength those who seek to know what fate will bring. Meanwhile, in Russia, only a very few of us work. The vast majority of those intellectuals whom I know seek for nothing do nothing and are at present incapable of hard work. They call themselves intellectuals, but they use thou and thee to their servants. They treat the peasants like animals. They learn badly. They read nothing seriously. They do nothing. About science, they only talk. About art, they understand little. They are all serious. They all have severe faces. They all talk about important things. They philosophize. And at the same time, the vast majority of us, 99 out of 100, live like savages, fighting and cursing at the slightest opportunity, eating filthily, sleeping in the dirt, in stuffiness, with fleas, stinks, smells, moral filth, and so on. And it's obvious that all our nice talk is only carried on to distract ourselves and others. Tell me, where are those creches we hear so much of? And where are those reading rooms? People only write novels about them. They don't really exist. Only dirt, vulgarity, and Asiatic plagues really exist. I'm afraid. And I don't at all like serious faces. I don't like serious conversations. Let's be quieter sooner. You know, I get up at five every morning. I work from morning till evening. I am always dealing with money of my own and other people's. And I see what people are like. You've only got to begin to do anything to find out how few honest people there are. How sometimes when I can't sleep, I think, well, Lord, you've given us such huge forests, infinite fields and endless horizons. And we living here ought really to be giants.
You want giants, do you? They're only good in stories, and even there, they frighten one. <gasps> and be cut off there! Playing his guitar. Cut off there. Mm, the sun's set, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Yes. Oh, nature. <laughs> oh, thou art wonderful. Thou shinest with eternal radiance. Oh, beautiful and indifferent one, thou whom we call mother, thou containest in thyself existence and death. Thou livest and destroyest. Uncle, dear. Uncle, you're doing it again. You'd better double the red into the middle. <laughs> oh, I'll be, I'll be quiet. I'll, I'll be quiet. Suddenly, a distant sound is heard as if from the sky. The sound of a breaking string, which dies away sadly. What's that? I don't know. It may be a bucket, fall, bucket falling down well somewhere else, uh, uh, but it's some way off. Uh, well, perhaps it's um, some bird, like a heron. Or an owl. It's unpleasant somehow. Before the misfortune, the same thing happened. An owl screamed, and the samovar hummed without stopping. Before what misfortune? Before the emancipation. Hmm. You know, my friends, let's go in. It's evening now. Anya, you've tears in your eyes. What is it, little girl? It's nothing, Mother. Someone's coming. Excuse me. Uh, may I go this way straight through to the station? Uh, you may. Uh, well, go along this path. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> uh, lovely weather. <clears throat> my brother, my suffering brother, mm. it comes out on the Volga, who knew who's grown... Oh, mademoiselle, please give a hungry Russian some kopeck. <gasps> There's manners everybody's got to keep. I'll take this. Here you are. Um, there's no silver. It doesn't matter. Here's gold. <laughs> uh, uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> I am deeply grateful to you. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. Oh, little mother, at home there's nothing for the servants to eat, and you gave him gold. What is it to be done with such a fool as I am? At home I'll give you everything I've got. Ermolai Alexeyevich, lend me some more. Very well. Let's go. It's time. And Varya, we've settled your affair. I congratulate you. You shouldn't joke about this, mother. <laughs> oh, feel me. Uh, get thee to a nunnery. Oh, my hands are all trembling. I, I haven't played billiards in a long time. Oh, feel me, nymph. Remember me in thine horizons. <laughs> Come along. It will soon be supper time. He did frighten me. My heart is beating hard. Let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, on August 22nd, the cherry orchard will be sold. Think of that. Think of that. Thanks to the tramp who frightened Varya. We're alone now. Varya is afraid we may fall in love with each other and won't get away from us for days on end. Her narrow mind won't allow her to understand that we are above love to escape all the petty and deceptive things which prevent our being happy and free. That is the aim and meaning of our lives. Forward, we go irresistibly on to that bright star which burns there in the distance. Don't lag behind, friends. How beautifully you talk. It's glorious here today. <clears throat> uh, yes, the weather is wonderful. What have you done to me, Peter? 
I don't love the cherry orchard as I used to. I loved it so tenderly. I thought there was no better place in the world than our orchard. All Russia is our orchard. The land is great and beautiful, and there are many marvelous places in it. Think, Anya, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, and all your ancestors were serf owners. They owned living souls. And now, doesn't something human look at you from every cherry in the orchard, every leaf, and every stalk? Don't you hear voices? Oh. It's awful. Your orchard is terrible. And when in the evening or at night you walk through the orchard, then the old bark on the trees sheds a dim light. And the old cherry trees seem to be dreaming of all that was a hundred, two hundred years ago, and are oppressed by their heavy visions. Still, at any rate, we've left those two hundred years behind us. So far, we've gained nothing at all. We don't know yet what the past is to be to us. We only philosophize. We complain that we are dull or we drink vodka. For it's so clear that in order to begin to live in the present, we must first redeem the past. And that can only be done by suffering, by strenuous, uninterrupted labor. Understand that, Anya. The house in which we live has long ceased to be our house. I shall go away. I give you my word. If you have the housekeeping keys, throw them down the well and go away. Be as free as the wind. How nicely you said that. Oh, believe me, Anya, believe me. I'm not 30 yet. I'm young. I'm still a student, but I have undergone a great deal. I'm as hungry as the winter. I'm ill. I'm shaken. I'm as poor as a beggar. And where haven't I been? Fate has tossed me everywhere. But my soul is always my own. Every minute of the day and the night, it is filled with unspeakable presentiments. I know that happiness is coming, Anya. I see it already. The moon is rising. Anya, where are you? Yes, the moon has risen. There is happiness. There it comes. It comes nearer and nearer. I hear it steps already. And if we do not see it, we shall not know it. But what does that matter? Others will see it. Anya, where are you? There's Vanya again. Disgraceful. Never mind. Let's go to the river. It's nice there. Let's go. Anya? Anya! reception room. A band is heard playing in another room.
Promenade Aoun Fair. Dancers come into the reception room. The first pair are Pishen and Charlotte. The second, Trofimov and Lubov. The third, Anya and the post office clerk. The fourth, Valia and the station master. Dunyasha and Epikorov is in the last pair. blooded and I have already had two strokes. Mm. It's hard for me to dance, but as they say, if you're in Rome, you must do as Rome does. I've got the strength of a horse, my dead father, who liked a joke, peace to his bones. Used to say, talking of our ancestors, that the ancient stock of the Semeninov Pisans was descended from the identical horse that Caligula made a senator. <laughs> but the trouble is, I have no money. A hungry dog only believes in meat. So I only believe in money. Yes, uh, there is something equine about your figure. Well, well, a horse is a fine animal. You can sell a horse. Madame Lepakin, Madame Lepakin. Oh, decayed gentleman. Yes, I am a decayed gentleman, and I'm proud of it. <sighs> We've hired the musicians, but how are they to be paid? If the energy which you, in the course of your life, have spent in looking for money to pay interest had been used for something else, then I believe, after all, you'd be able to turn everything upside down. Mm, Nietzsche, a philosopher, a very great, a most celebrated man, a man of enormous brain, <laughs> says in his books that you can forge banknotes. And have you read Nietzsche? Well, <laughs> Deshanka told me. And now I'm in such a position, I wouldn't mind forging them. I've got to pay 310 rubles the day after tomorrow. I've got 310 already. I. 
uh, I've lost my money. The money's gone. Where's the money? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh here it is. It's, it was behind the line here. <laughs> Aiden began to perspire a little bit. <laughs> Why is Leonid away so long? What's he doing in town? Dunyasha, give the musicians some tea. Business is off, I suppose. And the musicians needn't have come and we needn't have got up this pole. Well, never mind. Here is a pack of cards. Think of any one card you like. Have you thought of one yet, Pichin? I've thought of one, yes. Okay, now shuffle. Mm. All right, now, give them here. Oh, my dear Mr. Pichin. <laughs> Eins, zwei, drei. Now look and you will find them in your coat tail pocket. <laughs> An eight of spades, oh, quite right. <laughs> Think of that now. Now, tell me quickly, what is the top card? Mm. Um, uh, ace well... of hearts. <laughs> right. What card's on top? The ace of hearts. Right again. <laughs> <laughs> How lovely the weather is today. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh. Indeed, it's very lovely weather, madam. <gasps> you are so beautiful. You are my ideal. <laughs> oh, madam, you please me very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bravo, bravo, madam ventriloquist. <laughs> Think of that now. That was delightful story, but uh, Eva, no, no. I'm, I'm simply in love. <laughs> in love? Mm. Can you love? Guter Mensch, aber schlechter Musik can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you horse. All right, attention. Here is another trick. Here is a nice plaid shawl. I'm going to sell it. Won't anybody buy it? <laughs> Think of that now. <laughs> Eins, zwei, drei. Bravo, oh, okay. bravo, bravo. <laughs> Once again. Eins, zwei, drei. Bravo. <laughs> 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 The end. Oh, well, the little shot. wretch. <laughs> what? What would you? The drawing room. <laughs> Leonid hasn't come yet. I don't understand what he's doing so long in town. Everything must be over by now. The estate must be sold. Or if the sale never came off, then why does he stay so long? Uncle has bought it. I'm certain of it. Oh, yes. Grandmother sent him her authority for him to buy it in her name and transfer the debt to her. She's doing it for Anya, and I'm certain that God will help us and Uncle will buy it. Grandmother sent 15,000 rubles from Yaroslav to buy the property in her <laughs> name. She won't trust us. And that wasn't enough to pay the interest. My fate will be settled today. My fate will be settled. Madame Lopakin. Oh, eternal student. <laughs> He's already been ex expelled twice from the university. Why are you getting angry, Varia? He's teasing you about Lopakin. Well, what of it? You can marry Lopakin if you want to. He's a good, interesting man. <gasps> you need it if you don't want to. Nobody needs to force you against your will, my darling. I do look at the matter seriously, little mother, to be quite frank. He's a good man, and I like him. Then marry him. I don't understand what you're waiting for. I can't propose to him myself, little mother. People have been talking about him to me for two years now, but he either says nothing or jokes about it. I understand. He's getting rich. He's busy. He can't bother about me. If... 
I had some money, even a little, even only a hundred roubles, I'd throw up everything and, and go away. I'd go into a convent. Oh, how nice. Student ought to have some sense. <laughs> oh, how ugly you are now, Peter. How old you've grown. But mother, I can't go on without working. I want to be doing something every minute. Epikorov's broken a billiard cue. <laughs> wow. Why is Epikorov here? Who said he could play billiards? I don't understand these people. Don't tease her, Peter. You see that she's quite unhappy without that. She takes too much on herself. She keeps on interfering in other people's business. The whole summer, she's given no peace to me or to Anya. She's afraid we'll have a romance all to ourselves. What has it to do with her? As if I'd ever given her grounds to believe I'd stoop to such a vulgarity. We are above love. Oh, then I suppose I must be beneath love? Oh, why isn't Leonid here? If only I knew whether the estate is sold or not. The disaster seems to be so improbable that I don't know what to think. I'm all at sea. I may scream or do something silly. Save me, Peter, say something, say something. Isn't it all the same whether the estate is sold today or isn't? It's been all up with it for a long time. There's no turning back. The path's grown over. Be calm, dear. You shouldn't deceive yourself. For once in your life, at any rate, you must look the truth straight in the face. What truth? You see where truth is and where untruth is, but I seem to have lost my sight and seen nothing. You boldly settle all important questions, but tell me. Isn't it because you're young, because you haven't had time to suffer till you settled a single one of your questions? You boldly look forward. Isn't it because you cannot foresee or expect anything terrible? Because so far, life has been hidden from your young eyes. You are bolder, more honest, deeper than we are. But think only, be just a little magnanimous and have mercy on me. I was born here. My father and mother lived here. My grandfather, too. I love this house. I couldn't understand my life without that cherry orchard. And if it really must be sold, sell me with it. Oh. My son was drowned here. Have pity on me, good, kind man. You know I sympathize with all my soul. Yes, but it ought to be said differently, differently. Oh, I'm so sick at heart today. You cannot imagine. Here it's so noisy. My soul shakes at every sound. I shake all over. And I cannot go away by myself. I'm afraid of the silence. Don't judge me harshly, Peter. I loved you as if you belonged to my family. I'd gladly let Anya marry you. I swear it. Only, dear, you ought to work. Finish your studies. You don't do anything, only fate throws you about from place to place. It's so odd. Isn't it true? Yes. And you ought to do something to your beard to make it grow better. <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> I don't want to be a Beau Brummel. <sighs> These telegrams from Paris. I get one every day, yesterday and today. That wild man is ill again. He's bad again. He begs me for forgiveness and implores me to come. And I really ought to go to Paris to be near him. You look severe, Peter, but what can I do, my dear? What can I do? He's ill, he's alone, he's unhappy, and who's to look after him? Who's to keep him away from his heirs, to give from him medicine punctually? Oh, and, and why should I conceal it and say anything, say nothing about it? I love him, that's plain. 
I love him. I I love him. That love is a stone round my neck. I'm going with it to the bottom. But I love that stone and cannot live without it. <gasps> Don't think badly of me, Peter. Don't say anything to me. Don't say anything. For God's sake, forgive me for speaking candidly, but that man has robbed you. <gasps> no, 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 no. You ought to say that. You ought to say that. But he's a wretch. Oh, you alone don't know it. He's a petty thief, a nobody. You're 26 or 27 and still a schoolboy of the second class. Why not? You ought to be a man. At your age, you ought to be able to understand those who love. And, and you ought to be in love yourself. You must fall in love. Yes, yes. You aren't pure, you're just a freak, a queer fellow, a funny growth. What is she saying? I'm above law, you're not above law. You're just what our fierce calls a bungler. You have not to have a mistress at your age. Oh. This is awful, what is she saying? It's awful, I can't stand it, I'll go away. All is over between us. Oh. Peter, wait. Silly man, I was joking! Peter! Somebody is heard going out and falling downstairs noisily. What's that? <laughs> Peter's fallen down the stairs! <laughs> this Peter's a marvel. <laughs> a waltz is heard from the front room. Everybody dances. Oh, well, Peter, you pure soul, I beg your pardon. Let's dance? She dances with Peter. Anya and Varia dance. Well, grandfather, and not well. At our ball some time back, generals and barons and admirals used to dance, and now we send for post office clerks and the station master. And even they come as a favor. I'm very weak. The dead master, the grandfather, used to give everybody sealing wax when anything was wrong. I've taken sealing wax every day for 20 years or more. Perhaps that's why I still live. I'm tired of you, Grandfather. Oh, if only you'd hurry up and kick the bucket. Oh, you bungler. Trofimo and Lubold danced in the reception room, then into the sitting room. Merci. I'll sit down. I'm tired. Somebody in the kitchen was saying just now that the cherry orchard was sold today. Sold? To, to whom? He didn't say whom. He's gone now. Some old man was chattering about it a long time ago. A stranger. And Leonid Andreevich isn't here yet. He hasn't come. He's wearing a light Demi says on overcoat, he'll catch cold. Oh, these young fellows. I'll die of this. Go and find out, Yasha, to whom it's sold. Oh, oh, but he's been gone a long time, uh, the old man. Oh. <laughs> Why do you laugh? What are you glad about? Uh, uh, the cutoffs, too funny. He's a silly man. Two and twenty troubles. Fierce, if the estate is sold, where will you go? I'll go wherever you order me to go. Why do you look like that? Are you ill? I think you ought to go to bed. Yes, I'll go to bed. And who will hand things around and give orders without me? I have the whole house on my shoulders. Lubov Andreevna, I want to ask a favor of you. 
if you'll be so kind, if you go to Paris again, then please take me with you. It's absolutely impossible for me to stop here. Oh, what's the good of talking about it? You see for yourself that this is an uneducated country, <laughs> an immoral population, and it's so dull. The food in the kitchen is beastly, and here's this fears walking about and mumbling various inappropriate things. Take me with you. Be so kind. I come to ask for the pleasure of your little watch, dear lady. But all the same, you wonderful woman, I, I must have 180 little oh. rubles oh. from you. I must, I must. Thank you. 180 Thanks. little rubles. Oh, will you understand my soul's deep restlessness? In the drawing room, a figure in a gray top hat and in baggy check trousers is waving its hand and jumping about. Oh, the young mistress tells me to dance. There are a lot of gentlemen, but few ladies. My head goes round when I dance and my heart beats fierce Nikolaevich. The post office clerk told me something just now which made me catch my breath. What did he say to you? He said, you're like a little flower. Impolite. Like a little flower. Oh, I'm such a delicate girl. I simply love words of tenderness. You'll lose your head. Want to see me no more than if I was some insect. Ugh, life. What do you want? Undoubtedly, perhaps you may be right. Uh, but certainly if you regard the matter from the aspect, then you, if I may say so, and you must excuse my candidness, have absolutely reduced me to a state of mind. I know my fate. Every day, something unfortunate happens to me. And I've grown used to it a long time ago. I even look at my fate with a smile. You gave me your word, and though I... Uh, please, please, we'll talk later on. But uh, leave me alone now. I'm meditating now. Every day, something ha unfortunate happens to me. And if I may so express myself, only smile and then laugh. You go away, Dunyasha. You play Epikodov, you play billiards and break a cue and walk about the drawing room as if you were a visitor. You cannot, if I may say so, call me to order. I'm not calling you to order. I'm only telling you. You just walk about from place to place and never do your work. Goodness only knows why we keep a clerk. I work or walk about or, or eat or play billiards? This is only a matter to be settled by people of understanding and my elders. Oh, you dare to talk to me like that? You dare? You mean that I know nothing? Oh, get out of here. This minute. Ask you to express yourself more delicately? Get out this minute. Get out. Two and twenty troubles. I don't want any sign of you here. I don't want to see anything of you. What? Coming back? Oh, go. Go, go. I'll show you. Are you going? Are you going? Well, take that. Uh, much obliged. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Never mind. I thank you for my pleasant reception. Yeah isn't worth any thanks. I didn't hurt you, did I? No, not at all. Uh, there'll be an enormous bump, that's all. Labakin's return! Oh, he's back! Oh, am I? I... Labakin! <laughs> now we'll see what there is to see and hear what there is to hear. <laughs> you smell of cognac, my dear, my, my soul. <laughs> And we're all having a good time. <laughs> Is that you, Ermolai Alexeyevich? Why were you so long? Where's Leonid? 
Leonid Andreevich came back with me. Uh, he, he's coming. Well, what? Is it sold? Tell me! The, the, the sale ended up at four o'clock. We missed the train and had to wait till half past nine. Oh, my head is going around a little. Leon, what's happened? Leon, well, quick, for the love of God! Here, here, here take this. Uh, uh, well, here are the anchovies, herrings from Kirsch. I, I've no food today. I, I have had a time. Seven, oh, eighteen. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm awfully tired. Help me change my clothes, fears. What happened? Come on, tell us. Is the cherry orchard sold? It is sold. Who bought it? I bought it. <gasps> I, I bought it. <laughs> wait, wait, ladies and men, please. Uh, my head's going round. I, I can't <laughs> talk. <laughs> oh, oh, when we got to the sale, Deriganov was there already. Uh, Leonid Andreevich had only 15,000 rubles, and Deriganov offered 30,000 on top of the mortgage to begin with. Oh, I saw how matters were, so I grabbed hold of him and bid 40. He went up to 45. I offered 55. That means he went up by fives, and I went up by tens. <laughs> well, it came to an end. I bid 90 more than the mortgage, and it stayed with me. The cherry orchard is mine now, mine! <laughs> Oh my God, the cherry orchard's mine. Tell me I'm drunk or, or mad or, or dreaming. <laughs> well, it's all one. Hey, musicians, play. I want to hear you. Uh, come and look at Hermolai Lopakin laying his ax to the cherry orchard. Uh, come and look at the trees falling. Uh, we'll build villas here, and our grandsons and great-grandsons will see a new life here. Play on music! <laughs> why then, why didn't you take my advice? Oh, poor dear woman, you can't go back now. Oh, if only the whole thing was done with. If only our uneven, unhappy life were changed. He's <sighs> crying. Let's go into the drawing room and leave her by herself. Come on. What's that? Bandsman, play nicely. Go on. Do just as I want to. The new owner, the new owner of the cherry orchard is coming. <laughs> I can pay for everything. Mother? Mother, I'm crying. Oh, my dear. Come in, my mother, my beautiful mother. I love you. Bless you. The cherry orchard is sold. We've got it no longer, it's true. True, but don't cry, mother. You've still got your life before you. You've still got your beautiful, pure soul. Come with me. Come, dear, away from here. Come. We'll plant a new garden, finer than this. And you'll see it, and you'll understand. And the joy, gentle joy, will sink into your soul. Like the evening sun. And you'll smile, mother. Come, dear. Let's go.
there are no curtains on the windows, no pictures. Only a few pieces of furniture are left. They are piled up in a corner as if for sale. By the door that leads out of the house and at the back of the stage, portmanteau and traveling paraphernalia are piled up. Voices are heard. The peasants have come to say goodbye. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. The common people have come to say goodbye. I am of the opinion, Irmali Alexeyevich, that they're good people, but they don't understand very much. You gave them your purse, Luba. You can't go on like that. You can't. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't. Please, I ask you most humbly, just a little glass to say goodbye. I didn't remember to bring any from town and I only found one bottle at the station. Uh, please do. Won't you have any, really? Uh, if only you knew. I wouldn't have brought any at all. Uh, well, I, I shan't drink I any either then. Uh, Yasha, you have a drink, Yasha, at any rate. To those departing and good luck to those who stay behind. Oh, I can assure you that this is not real champagne. Uh, eight rubles a bottle. <laughs> it's devilish cold here. There are no fires today. We're going away. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Yasha? I'm just pleased. Uh, it's October outside, but it's as sunny and as quiet as if it were summer. Good for a building. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please remember, uh, it's only 47 minutes till the train goes. You must go off to the station in 20 minutes. Uh, hurry up. I think it's time we went. The carriages are waiting. Where the devil are my galoshes? Anya, I can't find my galoshes. I can't. I've got to go to Kharkov. I'm going on the same train as you. I'm going to spend the whole winter in Kharkov. I've been hanging about with you people so much, <laughs> going rusty without work. <laughs> and I can't live without working. I must have something to do with my hands. They hang about me as if they weren't mine at all. We'll go away now, and then you'll start on your useful labors. Have a glass. I won't. Uh, so you're off to Moscow now? Yes, I'll see them into town and tomorrow I'm off to Moscow. Uh, yes, I expect the professors don't lecture nowadays. They're waiting till you turn up. <laughs> That's not your business. Uh, how many years have you been going to the university? Think of something fresh. This is old and flat. You know, we may not meet each other again. So just let me get you, give you a word of advice on parting. Don't wave your hands about. Get rid of that habit of waving them about. And then building villas and reckoning on the residents, becoming freeholders in time, that's the same thing. It's all a matter of waving your hands about. Whether I want to or not, you know, I like you. You've thin, delicate fingers like those of an artist. And you have a thin, delicate soul. Goodbye, dear fellow. Uh, thanks for all that you said. If you want any, take some money from me for the journey. Why should I? I don't want it. But you've got nothing. Yes, I have. Thank you. I've got some for a translation. Uh, here it is in my pocket. <laughs> but I can't find my galoshes. Take your rubbish away. Why are you angry, Varya? Uh, these aren't my galoshes. In the spring, I sowed 3,000 acres of poppies. And now I've made 40,000 rubles net profit. And when my poppies were in flower, what a picture it was. So I, as I was saying, made 40,000 rubles. And I, I mean, I'd like to lend you some because I can afford it. Uh, why turn your nose up at it? Uh, I'm just a simple peasant. Mm. Your father was a peasant. Mine was a chemist. And that means absolutely nothing. 
No. No. Even if you gave me 20,000, I should refuse. I am a free man, and everything that all you people, rich and poor, value so highly and so dearly, hasn't the least influence over me. It's like a flock of down in the wind. I can do without you. I can pass you by. I'm strong and proud. Mankind goes on to the highest truths and to the highest happiness such as is only possible on earth. And I go into the ranks. Will you get there? I will. And I'll get there and show others the way. At this cutting trees are heard in the distance. Well, goodbye, old man. It's time to go. Here we stand pulling one another's noses, but life goes on in its own way all the time. When I work for a long time and I don't get tired, then I think more easily. And I think I get to understand why I exist. And there are only so many people in Russia, brother, who live for nothing at all. Still, work goes on without that. Leonid Andreevich, they say, has accepted a post in a bank. He will get 60,000 rubles a year, but he won't stand it. He's very lazy. Mother asks if he will stop them cutting down the orchard until she is gone. Yes, really. You ought to have enough tact not to do that. That's all right, all right. Yes, he's right. Has Fierce been sent to the hospital? I gave the order this morning. I suppose they sent him. Simeon Pantelovich, please make inquiries if Fierce has been sent to the hospital. I told Igor this morning. What's the use of asking ten times? Agent Fierce, in my conclusive opinion, isn't worth mending. His forefathers fathers had better, better have him. I only envy him. <clears throat> oh, well, of course. I thought so. Two and twenty troubles. Has Fierce been taken away to the hospital? Yes. Why didn't they take the letter to the doctor? It'll have to be sent after him. Here's Yasha. Yasha, tell him his mother's come and wants to say goodbye to him. She'll make me lose all patience. Oh, if you only looked at me once, Yasha. You're going away. You're leaving me behind. What's the use of crying? In six days, I'll be again in Paris. Tomorrow, we get into the express and off we go. I can hardly believe it. Vive la France! It doesn't suit me here. I can't live here. It's no good. Well, I've seen the uncivilized world. I've had enough of it. What do you want to cry for? You behave yourself properly and then you won't cry. Send me a letter from Paris. Oh, you know I loved you, Yasha, so much. I'm a sensitive creature, Yasha. Somebody's coming. We, we better be off. There's no time left. We didn't Somebody get smells in. Smells of herring. <laughs> uh, we needn't get into our carriages for 10 minutes. Goodbye, dear house, <sighs> old grandfather. The winter will go, the spring will come, and then you'll exist no more. You'll be pulled down. How much these walls have seen. Oh, <gasps> mwah, mwah, my treasure. You're radiant, your eyes flash like two jewels. Are you happy? Yes. Harry, a new life is beginning, Mother. <laughs> yes, really, um, everything's all right now. Before the cherry orchard was sold, we were all excited and, and we suffered. Uh, and then when the question was solved once and for all, we all calmed down uh, and even became cheerful. Well, I'm a bank official now and a financier. <laughs> oh, all oh, red right in the middle. <laughs> and you, Luba, for some reason or other, look better. Oh, oh, there's no doubt about it. 
Yes, my nerves are better. It's true. I sleep well. Take my luggage out, Yasha. It's time. Anya, my little girl, we'll soon see each other. I'm off to Paris. I'll live there on the money your grandmother from Yaroslav sent along to buy the estate. Bless her, <laughs> though it won't last long. <laughs> You'll come back soon, mother, won't you? I'll get ready and pass the exam at the higher school, and then I'll work and help you. <laughs> we'll read all sorts of books to one another, won't we? <laughs> we'll read in the autumn evenings. We'll read many books. <laughs> And a beautiful new world will open up before us. <laughs> you will come, mother. I'll come, my darling. Oh, oh Charlotte is happy. She sings. Oh. My little baby. Bye-bye. Oh, hush, my <laughs> little boy. <laughs> We'll find one, Charlotte Ivanovna. Don't be, you be afraid. Everybody's leaving us. Oh, why is going away? We've suddenly become unnecessary. I've nowhere to live in town. I must go away. Never mind. Hmm. Pichin, nature's marvel. Oh, let me get my breath back. I, I'm tired out. My most honored. Would you give me some water? <laughs> Good. Oh, come for money. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, I'm your humble servant, and I'm going out of the way of temptation. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been here for so long, dear madam. Lopakin, you here? Glad to see you. Man of immense brain. <laughs> Oh, God, take this, take this, take it. <laughs> 400 rubles. That leaves 840. <clears throat> yeah. What? As if I were dreaming. Where did you get this from? Stop, it's hot. I, a most unexpected thing happened. Some Englishman came along, found some white clay on my land. Lubov, here's 400 for you. you Oh, beautiful, beautiful lady. <laughs> I'll give you the rest later. <clears throat> oh, just now a young man in the train was saying that some great philosopher advises us all to jump off roofs. Jump, he says, and that's all. <laughs> to think of that now. <laughs> More water. <laughs> and Who were these Englishmen? Oh, I've leased off the land with the clay to them for 24 years. Oh, now, excuse me, I've no time. I must run off. I must go to Zinokov and to Garamana. I owe them all money. Goodbye. I'll come in on Thursday. <laughs> uh, we're just off to town and tomorrow I go abroad. What? Well, off to town? I, uh, I see furniture and, and, and trunks. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> never mind, <laughs> never mind. These Englishmen are of immense intellect. Never mind, be happy, God will help you. Never mind, everything in this world comes to an end. <laughs> Loop off, and if you should happen to hear my end has come, just remember this old horse and say, there was such and such a Semeninoff patient God bless his soul. <laughs> Wonderful weather. Wonderful weather, yes. <laughs> oh. Dushenka oh. sent her love. Oh. <sighs> now we can go. I have two anxieties, though. The first is poor Fierce. We've still five minutes. Mother, Fierce has already been sent to the hospital. Yasha sent him off this morning. Hmm. The second 
is Varia. She's used to getting up early and to work, and now she's no work to do. She's like a fish out of water. She's grown thin and pale, and she cries, poor thing. You know very well, Ermolai Alexeyevich, that I used to hope to marry her to you, and I suppose you're going to marry somebody. Anya, Charlotta, please leave. She loves you. She's your sort, and I don't understand. I really don't. Why you seem to be keeping away from each other? I don't understand. To tell the truth, I don't understand it myself. It's also strange. If there's still time, I'll be ready at once. Let's get it over once and for all. Oh. I don't feel as if I could ever propose to her without you. Excellent. I'll only take a minute. I'll call her. <laughs> the champagne's very appropriate. Uh, they're empty. Somebody's already drunk them. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> I call that licking it up. Excellent. We'll go up. Yasha, Ali, I'll call her in. Varya, leave that and come here. Come. I, uh, I can't seem to find it. What are you looking for? I packed it myself and I don't remember. Where are you going now, Varya Mihalovna? I, to the Ragulins. I've got an agreement to go and look after their house as housekeeper or something. Is that at Yashnivel? It's about 50 miles. So life in this house is finished now? Where is it? I, perhaps I've put it away in the trunk. Um, yes, there'll be no more life in this house. And I'm off to Kharkov at once, by this train. I, I've a lot of business on hand. I'm leaving Epikodov here. I've taken him on. Well, well. Last year at this time, the snow was already falling, if you remember. <laughs> and now it's nice and sunny, only it's rather cold. Uh, there's three degrees of frost. I didn't look. And um, our thermometer is broken. Hermelai Alexievich! Uh, uh, this minute! Well, we must go. Yes, it's quite time, little mother. I'll get to the Ragulins today if I don't miss the train. Anya, put on your things. <gasps> mm. Now oh. we can go away. Away. <laughs> Oh, my friends, my dear friends. Uh, can I be silent in leaving this house forevermore? Uh, can I restrain myself in saying farewell from, from expressing those feelings which now fill my whole body? Uncle, <laughs> Uncle you shouldn't. <laughs> my dad, um, uh, double the red into the middle. <laughs> Oh, I'll be quiet. Well, it's time to be off. At the coat of my coat. I'll sit here one more minute. It's as if I'd never really noticed that the walls and ceilings of this house were like, and now I look at them greedily with such tender love. <sighs> I remember when I was six years old, on Trinity Sunday, I sat at this window at, and looked and saw my father going to the church. Mm. 
Have all the things been taken away? Yes, all I think. Epicodoc, you see that everything is quite straight. <sighs> Hermoly Alexeyevich. <laughs> What's the matter with your voice? I swallowed something just now. I was having a drink of water. What manners? We go away, and not a soul remains behind. Till the spring. What are you doing? I never thought. Come along, let's take our seats. It's time, the train will be in directly. <sighs> Peter, here they are, your galoshes by that trunk. And how old and dirty they are. Come on. The train. The station. Oh, oh, cross in the middle. Oh, oh, white double in the corner. Let's go. No, are you all here? Uh, there's nobody else. There's a lot of things in here. I must lock them up. Goodbye, home. Goodbye, old life. Welcome, new life. Till the spring then, come on, uh, till we meet again. Oh, my sister, oh, my sister. My dear, my gentle, my beautiful orchard. My life, my youth, my happiness. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mother. To look at the walls and the windows for the last time. My dead mother used to like to walk about this room. My sister, my sister. Mother! We're coming! The sound of keys being turned into locks is heard. And then the noise of the carriages going away. It is quiet. Then the sound of an ax against the trees is heard in a silent sadly, and by itself, steps are heard. It's locked. They've gone away. They've forgotten about me. Never mind. I'll sit here. And Leonid Andreevich will have gone in a light overcoat instead of putting on his fur coat. Ah, I didn't see. Oh, these young people. <laughs> Life's gone on as if I'd never lived. I'll lie down. You've no strength left in you. Nothing left at all. Oh, you bungler. He lies without moving. The distant sound is heard as if from the sky of a breaking string. Silence follows it. And only the sound is heard some way away in the orchard of the ax falling on the trees. <laughs> <laughs>